House meeting in order for September the 15th, 2020. Just a note tonight for those that are viewing that council does not have to wear a face mask during the meeting as we are social distancing at six feet as long as councils remain sitting at their chairs. Result of the agenda for the September 15, 2020 regular meeting of council be adopted. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, second by Councillor White. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Resulted the minutes of the September 1st, 2020 regular council meeting and the September 8th, 2020 committee of the whole be approved. Moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. And we have Councillor Gray attending by video tonight. 4.1. Resolved at this regular meeting, the coast and the public hearing on variance order 3, 2020 be opened. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councilor Delorier. All in favor? It's carried. So I'll call the hearing to order uh, for application number 3, 2020. The purpose of the <coughs> hearing is to hear representation for or against the following variance application. Reduce the uh, rear yard from two feet to zero. The requirements of section 169 of the Planning Act have been adhered to. I request that any person making representation to the hearing state their name and civic address. And since there's no one here to make representation, I'll now call the um, hearing adjourned. Result of public hearing be adjourned and the regular meeting be reopened. Moved by Deputy Mayor Tony, seconded by Councillor Friesen. All in favor? It's carried. Moving on down to 6.1. Result of the 2020 AMM convention invite be received. Moved by Councillor White, second by Deputy Mayor Wayne Tony. This is on the, uh, as we are aware that the convention this fall or this winter has been uh, changed somewhat and it will we'll be attending by video conference. Uh, you see the uh, detailed letter there, but there's definitely more information of what the convention will look like and what the uh, seminars and so forth will be uh, coming to us. Any discussion on that? Okay, all in favor? It's carried. 6.2, result of the application for variance order 4, 2020 be received and the public hearing be set for October the 6th, 2020 at 7.30 p.m. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councilor Delorier. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Six three. Resolved the letter from Polio Plus District fifty five fifty be received, moved by House Memorials and my Deputy Mayor and Tony. This is uh, Letter that you can see coming from um, the Rotarians as far as uh, the details on um, their support <coughs> of polio for I guess their, their fight against polio and not and making sure that uh, that is not being uh, sidetracked as, as uh, polio is still a very critical uh, disease in, in the world, but also that the pandemic plays uh, a similar role. In, in the fight against uh, disease. Discussion on that? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 
6.4. Result of building permits 7020 through 7220, where the total estimated value of $475,200 be received. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? Got a pretty quiet group here tonight. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 7.1. Result of the Director of Public Works report be received. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion? Councillor White. Uh, Mr. Poole, relative to your meeting with the MIT minister uh, regarding the drainage west and north of us, I'm assuming that it was a vote. Can you give us uh, an update on what happened there? Uh, we met with the minister and ultimately uh, we did get MIT to agree to consider uh, draining PR 275 through 2nd Avenue Northwest. Uh, the highways will be paying for a, a drainage study to, to ensure that uh, it can handle the, the volume of water. Okay, so what I'm thinking there that we basically we maintain the flow of the direction it's going at the moment. To just yeah. clean up the dishes and make it better. Because they had the opportunity of talking to some of one of the farmers who talked to many of the farmers in that area today, and they were concerned that it might be pushing out over their agricultural land. And uh, if that was happening, that didn't sit well with them. But I said, as you said, so they'll be happy when that's published. Yeah, it'll depend on the results of the study. But yep. the town is in support of, uh, uh, I guess, either way it goes, really. But uh, in, in the end, we're, we're happy that they considered uh, that as a solution. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I, and you know, thanks for the question. But I think it's important to, to remember that the study will be done first to determine whether or not the flow of, of uh, I guess they say a 100-year flood or whatever can handle uh, or that channel can handle that type of flow, and if it doesn't, then I think then MIT will have to look at their options. Okay. Further discussion, Councilor Morio. Um, just a thank you to uh, Public Works for getting Safe Works or Safe Walks Canada. It was a lot of positive comments on dealing with the trip hazards that they dealt with there in a, in a professional um, and workmanship. Is excellent in the last. Um, definitely an advantage to having that contractor come in and look after those uh, trip hazards on our sidewalks. Okay. Further discussion, Councillor Delarier. Um, I see you've been giving notice to, or you know, some explanations regarding recycling, landfill, that type of thing. And usually, fall time is when letters go out for who wants what service for the for the upcoming year. Are we on track for that still to happen this fall? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Something similar to that, and I think that's probably important to say. Um, we did have, um, uh, I guess, what we call an overflow station at Public Works for recycling, and and that had been, I think, working out for the most part from the beginning, not so bad, but over the summer months, uh, this became a huge problem for us. Uh, uh, tons of recycled material, but also garbage, appliances, TVs, and so forth. It became an absolute uh, garbage dump area for people to dump their garbage. So maybe if you want to comment on that, uh, Mr. Poole. Yeah, several times throughout the summer we've, we've cleaned up that site area, hoping that uh, you know it was just a, a few bad apples, but it's getting worse and worse, and there's freezers and TVs there now. The bins have been removed. They're, they'll be taken across the scale, and uh, people will have to pay for their overflow or cut up their their uh, recyclables and use the provided uh, recycling carts. Uh, yeah, we'll basically have a sign there, and and uh, if we catch someone littering, or littering, they'll be pursued to the extent of the law. Thank you. Any further discussion? All oh, Councillor White. I'm, I'm going to assume that some of our problem with, with the TVs and the heavy metal thing, once we shut down over here, they'll take that to the dump where they don't have to pay either. They can drop it off before they go through. 
So we win win at both times. Yeah, that's correct. The e waste depot was open, uh, compost, uh, the paint depot is open. Soon it'll be a, uh, a fully functioning household hazardous waste depot, but that's soon coming. Okay. Councillor Gray and then uh, Deputy Mayor Wintoli. This isn't directly related to this report, but are we expecting to vote on variance three slash 20 tonight, or is that going to be at a future meeting? What's that? I that one. Uh, it'll be added in. Okay. Yeah, it, it was missed, but it'll be added in. Thank you. Uh, and just a comment to that, Mr. Cool, is I, I may have misunderstood what you said and, and Councillor White. The recycling bins will be across the scale, which means that we'll have that residents will have to pay for extra re recycling. Is that correct, or is it going to be on the, the previous to the scale where they do not have to pay for that? Basically, we will have to cross the scale. The town does get charged for for OSS picking up those bins, so it's. Uh, you know, if they get used, we'll, we'll continue to service, but we find that they're not being used, uh, if they're picking up empty bins, uh, we're going to remove the bins ultimately. But if people are using them, if they're paying, they will have to pay because there is a cost to us. But uh, I guess to answer your question, yes, they'll have to pay. Which, quite honestly, everybody else is paying. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, where did you pop that into? I think, you know what, I'll throw the question then. So there's no further discussion? Oh, no, just... Councilor Gray. We at one point talked about changing the schedule for recycling pickup. Is that coming to, um, is that study completed or nearing completion? Uh, we, well, we inquired with, with the residential recycling schedule and uh, they, they did bring up their contract. Uh, I haven't had time to really review uh, the details of the contract and, and what it says if we can change the actual schedule of residential cart pickup uh, easily, but uh, they, in the initial discussions they brought up the contract uh, in terms of an environmental health report, yeah, that is coming uh, to Council for proposed changes to our, our commercial recycling and solid waste collection. Thank you. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 721, resolved the August 2020 Protected Services Report be received. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion? All in favor? Councillor White, sorry. Just a uh, comment under Protected Services. I noticed that our bylaw officer has been very, very busy. A lot of parking tickets, I think a dozen or 15, plus graffiti, plus, plus, plus. So uh, I would hope, Mr. Poole, if you get a chance, uh, so it's nice to see uh, the work he's doing, and it's appreciated by myself and I'm sure Council. Okay, thank you. Okay, for uh, Councillor Gray. You're on mute. When I looked through it, there were a number of fire trips outside of town, one to Bozeman, two, I think, to uh, the municipality of Swan Valley West, um, but none of them more than an hour. And I'm, I'm trying to figure out how we got people together at the fire hall, drove to Bozeman, attended the scene, did whatever we had to do, and returned to, the, to our fire hall in less than an hour. Can we have maybe uh, you ask Mr. or the fire chief and maybe get a response? Thank you. Okay. I suspect that we're charging a flat rate for going and not having anything. And I think when we're charging fee for service, that's not what we should be doing. We should be charging just as any other business would from the time we leave the fire hall. Good catch. Councilor White. And what does the number 10, what does that number 10 hours mean? The, the invoice for 10 hours. 10 people responded. 10 people. Yeah. Thank you. It's the total number of man hours, isn't it? Right. Okay. Any dis uh, further discussion? All in favor? Oh. 
opposed, it's carry. Okay, 7-3, uh, we'll go with uh, council reports, 7-3, sorry. I'll start with Councilor Friesen. Will you have a sore throat? I have nothing to do. Okay, thank you. Councilor Morio. A uh, couple of meetings uh, this period. Uh, we had a meeting with uh, the Manitoba Métis Federation on a local project that they're looking at in the community. Uh, we had a third night of Chief Administrative Officer recruitment interviews. Um, attended the uh, Zoom meeting um, with AMM um, since they couldn't come out in person. And last week's meeting, the whole meeting room we discussed a number of issues. I have nothing to report this week. Okay. Councilor Moore, or sorry, Councilor Delorier. Nothing to report. Okay. Councilor White. Related to our community, the Swan Valley Outdoors, like many entities, could, couldn't perform their dinner this year, so they had a 50 50 and they raised $4,000, of which 2000 went to uh, Terry Fuller. And like as I go to a local person. But how many other entities, the Kinsmen, the hockey teams, aren't having a function, so that's biting our communities and those monies aren't being available. I had a PMH meeting today, and I, I guess in, in, uh, in summary, which we all know, but some of us are forgetting, myself now and then, with the COVID update, masks, wash regularly, socially distance, we're all six feet apart here. And uh, I met with one of the young doctors today also, and uh, a comment he made, so hopefully, that he might consider, the doctor suggested to us that maybe the mayor and the chief of staff, Dr. Burnside, for example, could get together and have a news release through Facebook or some such thing. And then with a local doctor, a local mayor, that might have resonate somewhat uh, through our community because we all need to be reminded now and then. Two other little issues that popped up at a phone call from a concerned citizen and uh, uh, Councillor Gray, I'd like to talk to you about it someday because I appreciate your input. He was concerned that with some of our immigrant people here, we are all immigrants, I certainly am, uh, there's a, an element of racism occurring in our valley and no particular denomination. I, the Irish have had their share. So uh, I can give you that gentleman's phone number. You might want to talk to him if it fits. Sure. Right. And I, I forwarded a, a note to all the councillors from a uh, posting from Swan Valley West relative to the new gun laws. I'm not prepared to talk about it at any length right now other than they've supported it, 100% interestingly. And if it's something that you as a counselor think we should uh, delve into further, I think I'll have it on the next agenda. Thank you, Your Worship. Okay, thank you. Uh, counselor Gray. Uh, yes, there's a number of items. Um, firstly, there are the, um, I, I've received um, two reports from uh, internally from staff that I'm going to distribute. I'm just going through them. Uh, one is the report with respect to comparing pool operations, not, uh, and they used Dauphin, Steinbeck, Yorkton. Not surprisingly, we were dead last in terms of our recovery of cost. We're also by far the smallest town for an indoor pool. So that will inform some of our future discussions. The second report that council asked for, and I think it was Council Morio had asked for the relationship between the town of Swan River and the Agricultural Society. Um, it's actually quite an interesting read. I think we'll need to discuss it at an upcoming uh, Committee of the Whole meeting. Um, I don't think the Agricultural Society is entirely well served by us. That is, we seem to have gotten much better of the deal than they have. Um, there are a number of things that we need to talk about, not the least of which is um, mowing the grass more often, in my view. Um, uh, and there was a question about whether who was supposed to be doing that. Well, it's us. And, and quite candidly, we're not even close to paying our bill with them by doing that. Um, and so we have some discussions about that. Uh, thirdly, um, I had a meeting with respect to the hall. Uh, you should go and see the repairs that uh, Lanier arranged. They are quite spectacular. But there are a number of other um, issues uh, that need to be dealt with in next year's budget, including um, ceilings for the ceiling and, and perhaps sound baffling for the hall um, that we need to talk about for capital items. In addition, she's going to do a complete, a more complete report on uh, what we should be 
charging for our facility, more particularly for the uh, food processing center. Um, I think it's safe to say the rates will go up. Um, it's also, uh, and I think we were unanimous in our community the whole meeting, um, where they're going to develop a policy on what that should be. Uh, and obviously, if there are long-term rentals, that will be a, a factor and we'll be able to look at that. I, I think, and um, Ms. Hinkleman can probably correct me, but I think that, that we expect that that will be by the end of September and then available for council sometime, probably at the committee of the, set, the, committee of the whole meeting on the second Tuesday of um, October and ready then for vote at our uh, council meeting at the third meeting in October. Um, pool repairs started. I guess everybody in town just about knows that, um, or, or at least starting, sort of starting. Uh, there was some work at the at the Legion Park. I, I made was made aware of today, so I'm going to do some further follow up on that. Uh, one of the questions I have, um, uh, Derek and um, Patty, uh, did we make application to the Swan Valley Watershed District for for that? It was re re remediation of the of the banking, as I understand, of the uh, of the Swan River of uh, the Swan River. Um, and given the fact that we are way in the ditch from what we've contributed to what uh, has been uh, contributed to us, I, I'm thinking that they may want to or we may want to make application for that. The last thing, and this will come up under the financial statements. Uh, again, when we look at the financial statements, we're in no better shape than we were last month when I raised the fact that it appears we're um, overspending. Um, certainly in the recreation department, my view is that we should not uh, allow any overtime. I'm going to be suggesting that we, in fact, curtail overtime across the board, um, amongst other things, for uh, the control of expenditures and ask for management's report on how we're going to control expenditures. Um, there were no other meetings other than the meetings that all of us attended. Uh, next week is going to be incredibly busy. There will be uh, at least three meetings. Lastly, your uh, next, this is the one after the last, I guess. Um, the the G four um, thing that's coming up. Um, I don't know if we're going to discuss that here or there, um, but uh, I certainly think we should uh, talk about rather than doing a circular um, set of um, issue papers some form of Zoom meeting, because I think we can probably do that most effectively. Those are the only things I have to report, Your Worship. Okay, um, thank you. Uh, Mr. Poole, do you want to uh, maybe comment on the watershed, if there's something there as far as an application or, or Councilor DeLore knows? Yeah, we, we did apply and uh, it was accepted that that uh, project is in the care and control of the, the watershed district. We are getting, uh, I believe it's above 80 percent of that uh, project paid for. Okay, thank you. And uh, Councillor White. Just uh, two questions uh, relative to the Ag Society land uh, on the fairground. Uh, I sense there's some pressures coming that we weren't keeping up our share of the job, but I believe we forgive their taxes. So it's not that we're getting a deal. They're getting a pretty good deal too, are they not? Am I correct in saying that we forgive their taxes? I think that maybe we can save that for our call meeting. Okay. okay. And the other thing is, youth on the skateboard park, uh, Councilor Graham, I'm not sure that's your job, or certainly whose job it is, but there must be 30 or 40 kids there, all sizes, shapes tonight. Uh, is that a public place where we should ask who the RCMP, I guess, to. I don't know. Is that legal? What's the question? Do what? It's a recreation uh, property owned in town, and uh, there's about. 30, 40 young people in very close proximity to one another. And then oh, is that our job? I don't have a clue. Yes, it is our, our, our facility. I think I, I I haven't first I heard of it was about um, 38 seconds ago so I don't know but off the top of my head I would say if it's our facility it's our responsibility that's the 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 orders have been pretty clear that it's the owner's responsibility to enforce those rules I think is there signage and so forth there I was just looking at the map that like while they're doing um, the class to be a mask is not required but I will double check on what the numbers and, and that kind of stuff that they're allowed to have there. Councillor Gray, right. did you hear that, Councillor Gray? Yeah, no, I think that's exactly correct. I mean, I, I don't know what the rules are, but if 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 there is a compliance requirement, we're required to com to enforce it. In my view, and again, uh, thank you. Okay, thank you. 
Uh, all right, so uh, for me, oh, Councillor Friesen has to say now. Councillor Gray, Gray, can you repeat your comments about the G4 meeting, please? My, my thought was, and we, I know it's on the agenda, so I, I lost over it, I apologize, but um, I think there are a number of critical issues going forward, and I don't think circulating, with the greatest respect to the councillors of the, of the arm of Mountain, circulating uh, position papers is, an is a very helpful way for us to advance those issues. Um, I, I, I don't think that I, I, a... Um, uh, Zoom meeting is the greatest solution, but I think it's a better solution than circulating. Um, unless, unless maybe all of my colleagues on council have a greater faith that our capacity to write convincing arguments will bring about the changes we want. But I certainly don't think that that's going to move very much. So I don't think there's much point in that. I, in fact, quite candidly, if, if that's what we're gonna do, I'd rather we didn't do anything. I think it'll work us backwards. So that's what I said was that we should have a uh, we should offer to host a Zoom meeting for G4 rather than uh, doing circulating position papers. Right, and we're and we're having a discussion about that later. But what is Councillor Gray referring to as far as the position paper? Was there an email that I must have missed? Yeah, there was an uh, yeah. The email from Ms. LePage said that if you want to have something, just circulate a position paper, and each council can then discuss it. Right. That came out, I think, today. <laughs> okay. Well, if you didn't get it, we'll make sure that you do get it, and anybody else. Okay. Okay, thank you, Councillor Gray. Uh, for me, that wasn't already covered already. I guess just basically what was uh, discussed earlier, that Mr. Poole and I traveled to Winnipeg to the ledge to see uh, Minister uh, Schuler, MIT, and discuss the ditch road uh, water drainage issue uh, running into his current second street. Uh, north. Second right? Avenue Northwest. Second Avenue Northwest. Sorry, thank you. So, like we said, that uh, they have agreed to pay for the study that will be done, and we'll see what the water flow looks like. And, and MIT will make a decision. Uh, we probably won't hear anything like that probably for at least six months, I would think. So, and you have and you've been working with MIT on what that looks like. So, and that meeting was uh, shared uh, with. Uh, MLA Wolchuk and also with Reed Galloway as well. Okay, so Councillor Gray, did you have a question? Your hand is up. Okay, thanks. Apologize, no, I just left it up from before. Okay, no problem. Result of the acting CEO report be received. Moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor White. Discussion? Questions? Comments from Councillor White. Very busy uh, CEO. If you look at those lists, thank you for what you do. Anything? Uh, no, I was going to mention the pool project, but Councillor Gray has already done that. They're here and working, so that's good news. Okay. All right. Any further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Eight one. Result of the Town of Swan River request technical and financial assistance from Manitoba Water Services Board for the water treatment plant PLC upgrade. The town's portion of the funding will be paid by transfer from water and sewer reserve. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, second by Councillor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? It's opposed? It's carried. 8-2. Result of the town of Swanover hire Paul Edwards of Duboff. Did I say that right? Yes. Edwards, Haight, and Shatter? Shatter. I'm terrible at that. Shatter. Duboff, Edwards, Haight, and Shatter. Okay, thank you. As legal counsel to lead collective marketing negotiations. Moved by Council Lord, Joe Lorne, second by Deputy Mayor with Tony. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Eight three. 
resolved the Swan Valley Regional Initiative for a Strong Economy 2020 budget be accepted as received. Moved by Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor Gray. Discussion? Basically what we had discussed before, but um, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Resolved the 2020 Swan Valley Regional Initiative for a Strong Economy Levy in the amount of 36407 and 35 cents be approved for payment. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, second by Councilor Gray. Discussion? Councilor Memorial. Um, just curious here, knowing that uh, our Mountain that out to, is it this year? Or, so how do we know the shortfall of their fee, how is that going to be made up from? Do you want to answer that? I see Councillor Gray does too, so. Councillor Gray. Okay, go ahead, Councillor Gray, and then Councillor Deputy Mayor Tony can go next. We actually have been rise a significant um, surplus, so I expect that we would use that for this year. I expect that next year we would we would hope to see Mountain return. If they chose not to, need to be a reallocation, I think, um, in terms of the totality of the budget. That's what I, that's our discussion. Uh, we have a meeting coming up this Thursday, and I expect that um, on Thursday that we will finalize that plan. Okay, perfect. Thank, Thank you. you. No, that's exactly what I was going to say. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Eight, five. Resolve the variance order 3 2020 for 33 Park Drive, Lot 18, Plan 2370 be approved. Moved by Memorial, seconded by. Ooh, I, I don't think that that's accurate. The public hearing on the, on the one that we. I think the addresses are incorrect, or am I wrong? I thought we were voting on the public hearing that we had today, not the one that was coming up. Public hearing we had today is on. 33 Park Drive. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, three, three, two thousand and twenty. Councillor Gray. I actually have um, a number of questions. The first is, um, do we know the size of the garden shed? Uh, it's in the application, I believe. I didn't see it, but maybe I'm just I'm sometimes glib and don't look at things carefully enough. No, it's not. I thought I had it. It says garden shed. Okay. We do not. Okay. Um, the second, uh, do we know that no fencing will be attached to it? It currently has a shed already there that will fall under the, um, uh, <coughs> the resolution. Is it shed? Say that again. The public use of the property of the parking lot. He has a shed already that's already over on the um, on the reserve, and this will be just right beside it. So uh, there is no fence in there, as far as I'm aware. So there's no, no there's already a, okay. I was, I'm going to come to that. I was going to come to that. So he has a shed on our property, and wants another shed adjacent to the property. That's true. Is that what I'm understanding? Yes. And that wasn't put in the application? No one thought that was relevant? You mean the previous shed? Well, the fact that there's a shed just off of, on our property, given our discussions about that, no one thought that would be a relevant factor to put into the application? Uh, or the back of the I guess because it fell under the resolution on May 2nd that it, that it was grandfathered in, the, the building inspector did not put it on the application. Okay, well, I think we should, uh, but no, so no, there's no fencing around that property at all and no intention to fence. That would kind of answer if there's an intention. 
Okay. Do we know what materials the shed is intended to be made of? No. Do we know if that space is level? Uh, no, those, those, those aren't really questions that we ask when people build sheds. If they want an unlevel shed, we, we let them build an unlevel shed. No, but it's on a, okay, if it's two feet inside the property line, I don't care if they build it sideways, but it's on our property line. If it's built on a, on a slope, that would be a relevant factor. And lastly, is there a rationale that we should grant the variation? Uh, I guess in, in administration's view, we don't really have a problem with this variance be because there is bush, it backs up to the river. And I think it's proof that uh, the variances shouldn't be grouped up together. I think it, it is a case by case situation. And keeping in mind that uh, all the variances are considered when, when we review our zoning bylaw like we're doing right now. Uh, you know, we just, just consider that if you go look at this, but like a, I guess the point being is that it is proof that the variances should be taken as a case-by-case -case matter because the, the administration's purview, uh, you know, this, this is much more acceptable than say, say one that backs off uh, a public reserve that's surrounded by residential houses. You know, if, if, they, if, if that section all did, it, the PR, shrinks in this case it's public reserve up against the river you know it's it's tough to uh you know you, you know we don't have any policy that's, that groups everything together but uh this variance i guess we we didn't have a problem we don't have a problem with it. I misunderstood, I, I mean, you misunderstand. So the position that we have from administration, so that's clear, is that encroachment on um, public lands is okay, but encroachment on public land, on private lands would not be. No, if we wanted to determine, I guess if we wanted to determine where it's okay and where it's not, then that, that, that's the best I can explain it. If we we're gonna create a policy and I'm sure that's coming with our with our agreements and our private use of public land. That it's that it's all the same for everybody, which I'm okay with as well. Uh, and that's you know, it's this council's choice. Councilor Delorier, did, did Mr. Bartman indicate like why he needed it? You know, not not to conform to the the zoning. Like, is, is there a specific reason why he wants, or just to? Have more utilization of his backyard. He wanted to match. She originally asked and put it exactly the same as the other one. Okay. And then we explained to her, the building inspector explained to him that you know we have this new policy coming into place so that he requested the variance to get to the property line. Council Moore. Uh, so with that, would this be an opportunity that's like for him to bring the existing shed within his own property lines if he's looking to have them matched? that they're both within the property lines as, as I think there's a lot of unanswered questions like there's not even like all it shows is like on the application is just the, the, the lot it doesn't show any plot plan of where he has existing structures or how, where he wants to put the other ones so, so I think uh, I'll make a motion to table this until we get more information to the next council meeting to hopefully uh, answer some of these concerns bring forward since the applicant's not here to uh, answer them for us. Okay, motion to be able second by Councillor White. And a, and a comment? Yes. Uh, I'm wondering if we could get some photographs up against the river and we get a better visual of what we're talking about. It's an excellent idea. Okay. Thank you. All in favor? It's carried. So we'll be uh, uh, at our next meeting with that information that's uh, requested by council. Thank you. 10.1. Resolve that the account says follows be hereby approved for payment. General accounts checks number 26618 to number 26659 for a total of 136,951 and 31 cents. Payroll accounts check number 4721 to 4727 for a total of 107,000 
$11.02. Direct deposits for $50, $6,000, $16,981.80. Moved by Councilor Moyo, seconded by Councilor White. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 10 2. Resolved financial statements for the eight months ending August 31st, 2020 be adopted as received. Moved by Councilor Delorier, seconded by Councilor Gray. Discussion, Councillor Gray and then Councillor Moore or uh, Deloria. Uh, again, uh, Mr. Kennedy can can correct me, but it looks to me like we're on a projection, uh, a trajectory to overspend. Now it may be that, for instance, that the pool will take less money, which and, and we may be able to reallocate something. Although most of that's to be done from borrowing, and so I don't know that will save us. Um, do we have a plan? Because uh, we talked, I ra raised it last time, and, and I know we were informal. It was an informal suggestion, but do we have a plan to make sure we're not over budget? <coughs> Firstly, and secondly, um, I am going to suggest, and we will deal with it by, re by a motion from res or a resolution from me following, that um, we restrict overtime to extraordinary to emergent situations, and I mean truly emergent. Uh we are Mr. putting ourselves in a difficult financial position. Mr. Ganita, do you want to respond to that? I would agree with Councillor Gray's comments. Okay, and that is on, on the overtime. So we could do a resolution on that? Well, yeah, yeah. I, I think the financial statements are the financial statements. They accurately reflect what we are, our situation is, so they should be passed. Yeah, no, I, yeah. <clears throat> so any further discussion on that? Oh, sorry, Councillor Delorier. Um, of equally concerning as the expenditures also, our other income is substantially down. Um, yeah. If we could get a, you know, is there, you know, maybe, maybe it's not dispersed evenly throughout the year. So I guess, you know, I don't, uh, if we can get some sort of a report on if we're expecting that to, you know, we're 66, as of this report, we're 66% of the way through the year and we only have 40% of our other income. If we, if, if you guys are expecting that to be caught up, that's fine. But if not, I think that's another area of concern that uh, we'll have to start thinking about. So we can get that as well? Yes. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Your Worship? Yes. I wish to introduce a further resolution. And the resolution has two parts. Firstly, that effective immediately all overtime be suspended absent an emergent situation approved by a director, i.e. Mr. Poole or, or uh, acting CAO Ms. Henkelman. And secondly, that management, that administration prepare a report both on the uh, shortfalls in revenues and the over expenditures in funds and plans to reduce or increase so that we have a balanced a financial statement for December the 31st for the October 13th Committee of the Whole meeting. Okay, give us one minute. You might have to go back and repeat some of that. That's fine. That'll be I'm going to have to. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Sounds good. Okay, we'll just move on and then we'll go back to that. Okay.
Councilor Delore has excused himself for the next item. 10-3. Whereas sections 326 of the Municipal Act provides that a municipality may impose supplementary taxes and subsections 306 and 306.1 provide a municipality may cancel or reduce taxes upon receipt of assessment alterations for mantle assessment services. Therefore, be it resolved that the assessment alteration made by Manitoba Assessment Services on January 30th, <clears throat> March the 4th, April the 7th, July the 2nd, July the 9th, July the 15th, August the 28th, August 31st, September the 4th and September the 8th, and September the 9th, 2020, be made to the 2020 property and business tax rules with the resulting increases totaling 19,410 and 77 cents and the reductions totaling 21,169 and 33 cents. <clears throat> Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion. All in favor? It's carried. Councillor Gloria will re enter the meeting. Are we ready with that one yet? I can just keep going here. Yeah. Pardon? You can look at it there now. Where do you have it? It would have to be like 10.4. 10 10 refresh. Oh, okay. I gotta refresh then. So everybody refresh. How do you refresh again? Okay. 10.4. Have a look at 10-4, Councillor Gray. Refresh. It wasn't as complete as my comments, but it's sufficient as long as we understand that it means specific approval and a report with respect to overtime, and it means a plan for both revenues and expenses and how we're going to come to a balanced budget, which may include reductions in staffing, whatever. Okay. I'll read the resolution, and then, and then we can comment or debate. Resolve that the overtime be restricted immediately unless emergency situation that administration prepare a report on the current financial situation to prepare for delivering a balanced budget in December of 2020. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor Delorier. Discussion, Councillor Morio. Um, I'm just thinking uh, we need to identify who who we're stri restricting overtime to. It's uh, let's say that resolve that municipal employee overtime to clarify who who are targeting so the so you want to I'm, I think you want to make a friendly, friendly amendment. amendment. Okay, and how does that look about uh, it would be that resolve that all municipal employee overtime be restricted. So that's fine with me. Uh, okay. Uh, Ms. Hankelman, we talked about this. So, a friendly amendment, we have to have a motion to amend. Do you want to move a second or on the amendments? No, back. Well, here. On, a, on an amendment, we have to. On a friendly amendment, we can simply amend the wording. That's the that's the distinction between an amendment, a debated amendment, right. and a friendly amendment. If both the mover and seconder agree, that's the intention. Right and adjust the wording. Is that you want to follow Robert's rules? Okay. If, if you want to follow Robert, Robert's rules, there is no such thing as a friendly amendment. There's only an amendment. And, and and so the AMM, we always have friendly amendments. So, right. So we are allowed to do friendly amendments. So I think for this time, unless somebody tells us differently, at some point in time, we'll let Councillor uh, Morio make his, uh, suggest his friendly amendment. And then if we have a seconder, then we'll... Uh, well the original well, and seconder have to agree. Agree to it, Frank. So what right. would the amendment look like, Councillor Morio? Uh, it would look like that. The resolution would read, resolve that all municipal employees' overtime 
be restricted immediately. I, th I think I think the wording we want is overtime for all municipal employees. Our municipal employees, right? So overtime first, overtime for all municipal employees. But I agree that was the intention. Okay. Uh, okay. So uh, the mover was Councilor Gray, and the yeah, I agree. Okay. So we have agree. Okay. So now we'll just wait for it to come up here, and then we'll let Councilor White. Uh, this may help what I have to say. Okay, go ahead. It says uh, on the current financial solution to prepare for delivering a delivery. You got an extra A in there, so we're going to be grammatically correct, which I think is appropriate. We can remove that A. Right. Report on the current financial situation to prepare for delivering a balanced budget. Just get that A out of there. Right. Okay. So again, I agree. Uh, I'll get you all to uh, refresh then. Is that gone now? Okay. Okay, I'll read it again. Uh, resolve that overtime for all municipal employees be restricted immediately unless emergency situation and that administration prepare a report on the current financial situation to prepare for delivering a balanced budget in December of 2020. Okay? Move on. There, actually, Your Worship, the other thing I had in there was that the report would come to us for the October 13th Committee of the Whole meeting. And as long as that's understood, I don't. We don't need it in there. As long as it's understood. Let's just put it in there. Council uh, Warren. Before we or we vote, vote on this, uh, just a question to uh, Mr. Poole. Um, how would this? Resolution negatively affects our ability to uh, do street cleaning and provide snow covering come December. I am going to enforce the resolution so street cleaning will stop unless it's emergent. So if there's or can be light or or can it be mitigated through scheduling efforts. Well, we would do we would do exactly that. Like I said. Work 30 hours through the day, yes. We have to follow that. Yeah. But there'd be another point where, like just off the top of my head, if there's a sewer replacement, there's two are in the works right now, and people can't flush their toilets. That's I would I would see that as acceptable that they can work overtime to finish that work off and connect the pipes. Is that are we on the same page? Okay, I'll fill the hole, but at least connect the service. Okay, <clears throat> I'll read it one more time. Resolve that overtime for all municipal employees be restricted immediately unless emergency situation and that administration prepare a report on the current financial situation to prepare for delivering a balanced budget in December of 2020. <clears throat> Furthermore, a report will be presented at the October 13, 2020 Committee of the Whole Meeting. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Thanks. <laughs> 11 1. Resolve that bylaw 7 2020 being a bylaw to provide for the expenditure of borrowing of funds for the purchase of firefighting incident command vehicle be read a third time and be passed. Moved by. Councilor Morio, second by Councilor Gray. Recorded vote. All in favor? Opposed? Aye. Yes, one. Yeah. It's carried. 11 2. Result of bylaw 8 2020 being a bylaw to provide for the expenditure and borrowing of funds for the purchase of a back or sorry purchase of a loader backhoe to be read a third time and be passed. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wasconi, second by Councilor Gray. Discussion. Recorded vote. All in favor? Aye. It's carried unanimous.
11.3, resolve the bylaw 9, 2020, being a bylaw to provide for the repair and renovation of the Richardson Recreation and Wellness Center, Whirlpool, HVAC, and building envelope, envelope, including gathering, planning, designing, and all other related requirements be read a third time and be passed. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? Recorded vote. All in favor? Unanimous. It's carried. Thirteen. Resolved in pursuance of sections 152 and 3 of the Municipal Act Council go into committee and close the meeting to the public. We have union negotiations to discuss. Moved by. Councillor Morio, seconded by Councillor Friesen. All in favor? Carry. We're in camera. Result of this regular meeting, a council be now adjourned. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor Gray. All in favor? It's carried. We're adjourned.